Okay, it's on. Looks Blurry. blurry tonight. I know. Doesn't it look blurry? It looks blurry. Well, it's just my phone might be dirty. It would be the camera that's dirty. Yeah, I know. The, well, it could be the screen, too. Or the floor. There you go. Much better. Yep, that's good. What? Five people already? Five people already? Why? Yeah, get out there. Do some. Start yeah, waving no. everybody. Come on. Okay. That's, he can see everything. <laughs> do the floss. <laughs> oh my god, you're a maniac. Hey, just waiting for some people to chime in. Um, tonight we're going to talk about tournaments and everything you need to know about playing long weekends. Um, out there in the tournament circuit. But this is really, tonight is for the kids, but the parents should listen up and there's other coaches out there watching, steal some of our secrets that we're going to give out tonight. Um, also, today was awesome. Fox 29 News, everybody that watched, texted us, emailed us, Facebooked us. It was cool. Um, it was a lot of fun for me and Jude, so it's Feedback's been great. Um, we were in the same clothes that we're in today. Yeah, thanks, Drew. We're in the same clothes we're in today from this morning at 8 o'clock. But it's been a fun day for sure. Uh, Jude's been very excited. So, again, we're just going to sit here and wait a couple more minutes. Tonight, if anybody has any questions, uh, comment and ask the questions while we're going. I'll be checking the camera every once in a while to see if there's any questions. Like if any kids need to talk in the beginning. Make sure you let us know who's watching too. Comment in and let us know who's watching. It's okay. It's okay. All right. So we'll just wait for some comments and some some more of our people to come in, and we'll get started in a few minutes. What? Oh, I gotta put the camera on this one. No, I didn't put the camera. I didn't put the microphone. Sorry. Might be better. Daniel Mac, is that better? The camera. And that mic. Alright, so let's let's uh, reiterate. We're going to do some uh, talk about tournaments tonight. Everything that goes along with tournaments. You know, uh, some secrets that we do for getting through long weekends when you're playing three, four, five games. And again, if you have any questions, comment, you know. Please check in here too. Let us know who's watching. I see we got about 30, 30 some people watching already. Comment. Let us know you're here so we can give some shout outs. All right. We'll start up in about one minute. Well, say hi. Hi. <laughs> That's our sidekick, Jude. So. Sidekick? Yeah. Assistant. You want to comment? Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. All right. So here come the comments now. Why is Luke? The Nizios are watching. I uh, see George Conway's watching. Probably his dad, too, Michael. Joey B watching. Is the sound getting better? People are saying no sound. Jim Reeves, what's up, buddy? Can you hear it? Why, why is people saying no sound, though? Uh, that's probably from earlier. Mike Labacki, world-famous painter. Hey, Steve, my buddy Steve McGarry. <laughs> world-famous soccer coach at Holy uh, Family it's and throughout the, um, it's Philadelphia. It's All right, we, we finally hooked up our microphone. All right, Alexander Moritz, our, good to me. our um, trivia expert. We are going to have a trivia question again tonight. I forgot to say that. For more Phillies tickets, believe it or not. So we've already given out four Phillies tickets in some of our videos. We're going to give out two more tonight for a uh, for the trivia question we're going to answer. Again, tonight's going to all be all about tournaments and how we handle tournaments and uh, how we get through a tournament, some tricks. So I'm going to turn the camera around, go out to our main area. Greg Blewett asked, will we still have tournaments? That's a great question, Greg. Did a 
it come through online? Did it come through online yet? So we are. I'm going to answer some uh, some some questions for sure about tournaments. I'm going to stay right here right now so I can see some of the questions. So let's get started. So we're talking about tournament baseball right now. A lot of people are nervous and worried that there might not be tournament ball. There might not be baseball at all. I've been staying positive. I've been saying May first for the longest time. I think that that's a good date to where we're going to start seeing this thing come down. And then maybe we can start to begin to talk about playing again. I'm just talking about baseball. Any other sports that are out there, you know, I feel horrible for these high school kids, these eighth graders for CYO ball. It's it's a mess. It's it's horrible. Um, I do know a lot of the kids, and I know a lot of the coaches in the Catholic league, um, especially a lot of the uh, the seniors. Trust me when I tell you, these coaches are doing everything they can to figure something out for you guys. Um, if this season gets canceled, they're going to do their best to. Do something, okay? And hopefully, you know, hopefully you guys get to play in May. I think that would be great. Even if you do, like, a, a real short season, you get to play one more time with your buddy. So that's my little public service announcement on that. Again, we feel horrible for these kids. So, and that's just not just the boys, the girls, softball. Anybody that plays a spring sport that's being canceled right now, it's terrible. So uh, as far as tournaments go, like I said, we – we, my, my club does a lot of tournaments. The younger teams do leagues and tournaments. So the, a lot of the questions I get all the time is, is uh, how do you guys get through a long weekend? You know, how do you do it four or five games in a weekend? My older teams, my older team last year had a tournament where we actually, you know, had to play five in less than 24 hours. So we're going to go over some tips, some stuff that you can, some stuff that you can do to help you and your teammates get through it. Um, Biggest thing for me is kids being comfortable when you get in one of those long, hot days. You know, keep them hydrated. They should hydrate. Kids should always hydrate for any sport, soccer, baseball, basketball, before a weekend. Start hydrating in the middle of the week. You know, drink your Gatorade, drink your, you know, anything with electrolytes. Get your, get your body used to it and get ready to, you know, have to play, you know, numerous games in a short period of time. So stay hydrated. Um, what's the matter, Drew? One more, one more. No, I'm good. I don't want a Gatorade now. Jude's asking me if I want a Gatorade now. <laughs> um, Chuck Bushback's watching right now. He's an expert in the science of baseball. So if you have any questions about any of that stuff, as far as hydrating anything, I would reach out to Chuck. Um, as far as tournaments go on the weekends, you know, a lot of these tournaments are they minimum. They call it a minimum of three games. And if you get into a Sunday, you play till you lose. So some teams could be playing up to four or five games. The way I do things is pretty simple. Saturdays. Usually you play your two games. Um, you're trying to play for seeding. A lot of these tournaments now are making you not just play Saturday and everybody makes the playoff round. Um, that's how it used to be. And it took a lot of the luster out of Saturdays. Now Saturdays mean something. Saturdays mean you have to at least win one game. So um, the biggest thing with that is, you know, setting up, setting up your pitching, setting up, you know, who you think can handle these pressure games. Um, like I said, you can't even worry about Sunday until you get through Saturday. It's a big thing. So we always play to win game one. I mean, you play to win every game, but we like to throw our best guys out there sometimes in game one of a tournament, especially if it's early on Saturday. Maybe throw your best guy out there another inning or two, get him an inning or two, and maybe you jump out to a lead. Or on the other end, you're, you start losing pretty bad. You can pull them out and get him, get him ready for the next game or Sunday. So that's how I like to start off my tournaments. Sorry, we got kids running through here, kids and cats. <laughs> so that's how I like to start off my tournaments with, you know, trying to really, really focus on winning game one. Now, if you lose game one, okay, it's all hands on deck for game two to get to, to make it into Sunday's knockout round. Um, if you win game one, now you can maybe slow down a little bit in game two, you know. Maybe not throw one of your top guys. Throw one of your one of your good pitchers, but not one of your top guys, knowing that usually one win in a tournament. I'm on a Saturday. It's going to get you into the knockout round. Okay, so that's how we do it. We, you know, you're also if you win your first game, you do want to play for a good seed. But like I said, you know, do your research on your team you're playing against and everything. But winning that first game takes the pressure off of everything, so you don't have to worry about as much. Like I said, throwing your top top pitchers out there to catch a win. So let's get through Saturday. So we got through Saturday. We we went one and one and. We're going into Sunday now as, you know, a four, five, six seed where we know we're going to have to play three to win the tournament, a quarter, semis, and championship. Um, if we're lucky enough to go 2-0 on Saturday, 
um, without burning a lot of pitching up, we have a bye. Now we're in the semifinals already. So let's do the scenario where we have to win three games. When Sunday comes, you just have to play to win. I see so many I, – I watch so many teams, and I've done it, where, you know, you sandbag your best pitcher for a while. Oh, I'm going to beat this team, and I'll save him for the semis. And then if we get to the championship, we'll still have a guy or two left. And then you end up losing that first game because, you know, you, you – they call it even bullets in the chambers. So try not to do that, okay? Like I said, research your team from the day before. You're going to see everybody's scores and records when you're done Saturday. Maybe they played somebody you played. Maybe you got to watch them play a little bit on Saturday. Some of my parents are great on my older team. They love to like scout the, scout the games that are going on around us when we're playing. Oh, I watched them play. They're only okay. We should handle them. So you can line up your pitching that way. Um, you get into these top tier tournaments. You just got to play to win each game. I mean, you're not going to you're not going to just go in and just throw anybody and beat anybody in these better tournaments. So. But so now we get for our quarterfinal game. Now my philosophy is you get to the semis, you got to throw your best guys. You have to throw your number one guy. At that point, the sandbag is over. You know, if you get to a championship game, you're going to have somebody left and everybody's going to be in the same boat as you. Pitch and waste it. You know, pitcher's tired, pitcher's hurt, player's hurt. You just play the championship game to play it. Are everybody okay hearing me? Cannot hear. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, turn your own volume up too. That might help. But uh, so we're in Sun. Now we're in Sunday of a tournament. Like I said, get into that semifinal game and, and and put all hands on deck because, like I said, once you get to a championship game, forget it. Like everybody's in the same boat. You're just playing. It's just a battle. Okay, so do what you can to get to a championship game, and then the rest will take take care of business. If you get to a championship game, it means you're playing well. It means your guys are hitting. It means you know everything's coming together. So don't really worry about pitching as much in a championship game. If you're lucky enough, like some teams, and my teams are close to having this, some teams have six, seven guys that could be considered number one guys. So, um, like I said, I, I, I do believe my older team is at that point now. So, but some teams, again, some teams only have two, three really top tier pitchers, and the rest are, the rest are guys who just eat up innings. What's the matter? Um, oh. So, that's basically how we run through a tournament. Coaching a tournament on Saturdays, you know, you hear a lot of people talk about running the score up. And listen, in a tournament, it's innings. You know, if you have to play five games when a tournament, that could be 35 innings in less, you know, or if you're a younger team, 30 innings in less than 24 hours. You got a chance to, to you know, put a team out of their misery early and get that 10 run rule and get out of there in three, four innings. It just helps you. It helps your pitching. It helps everything. And any coaches who don't understand that, really don't understand how tournaments work. I've been on both ends of it, to be honest with you. I've taken some beatings in tournaments for sure to where I turn to my assistants. I see he's watching right now, Rich, and I'll say, hey, or my old assistant, J.R. Healy, and say, hey, man, we're just going to take this one on the chin. Let's get back up and, and uh, win game two and then get into Sunday. So it works both ways. If you've got a chance to put your foot on the gas and get somebody knocked down in three, four innings, do it. And on the other end of it, a good coach can usually feel what's going on. You get down 8, 9, 10, 11, nothing after three, four innings, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world, okay? So if you have a chance, do it. If you're getting it done to you, don't go crazy. If you're down 9, 10, 11 runs in game one of a tournament or game two of a tournament where you already won a game, throwing your best guys out there out of spite and you want to show to the team that we can shut them down even though you're losing, okay? So you have to be smart and level-headed about it. Same with Sundays. You get a chance to put a team away. You got to run that score up until, and again, I'm not real big on running the score up in leagues, but in tournaments, you get to that 10, 12 run lead, you know, that's 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 perfect. Because like I said, you can put a team out of their misery in three, four innings, save your guys, rest your guys, okay? This year is going to be really different because nothing's going to start till middle of May or June. So it's going to be hot. So these kids have to hydrate. They have to stretch. And saving innings and keeping kids in the dugout while other teams are playing is a big advantage, whether people want to hear it or not. I mean, I've been in tournaments where my team gets in a semifinal game and we're in extra innings. We're in the 10th, 9th, 10th inning. And the team we're waiting to play just beat somebody 12, 13, nothing, and only played three innings. Who's got the advantage going into that championship game? Okay, so that's a big, big thing. Okay, knowing the scores, staying on top of everything, staying on top of your pitchers. Pitch counts are huge. I always hear guys say, how many innings should I throw my guys? 
in a tournament. It's not, and me, it's not innings. It's not innings. You got to watch their pitch count over a weekend, okay? These younger kids can turn it off and on a lot easier than the older kids. So, you know, we have numbers that we use. And if people want the numbers, they can text me on the side or email. I'm not going to get into all that. But we have pitch counts we use for each age group. You know, and you got to take into consideration. You'll see me in tournaments a lot of times say, hey, just go out and throw three warm-ups this inning instead of seven. Those seven warm-ups between innings, they add up. You, if the guy throws four innings, that's 28 extra pitches he threw. Plus the 15 or 20 he threw before the game started. Plus the game. So you wonder why these kids get tired. So really get them on a tight pitch count. And take all that other stuff into consideration. Between innings. You know, before the game. Okay, stuff like that where they're, where they're throwing and warming up. Okay, so you want to keep these kids fresh and safe is the main thing. Okay, so again, if you have any questions about how I do my pitch counts with my guys, you can text me or, or inbox me or message me, okay? And I can kind of break it down for you a little bit, give you a little bit of a heads up. Some cool tips we use for our players. We are, we're on a Sunday and it's hot out. I always tell my guys to bring a change of socks. It sounds so weird, <laughs> but we've all had blisters on our feet. Blisters are, can get caused by, you know, sweaty feet, running around, rubbing and all that. So I have my guys, a lot of times I suggest they change socks between games. Such a little thing, but you know, it goes a long way, okay? So bring an extra pair of socks because you never know how long you're going to play. You never know how much they're going to sweat. As they get older, they sweat a lot more. So, you know, I always keep, you know, we always try to keep a cooler in the uh, dugout, not beer, with drinks in it. The kids have their own drinks. Um, stuff like that. Um, wet towels for your catcher. Wet towels for the players to put around their necks on these hot days. It all helps out. Powder. My guys all try to bring powder for those uncomfortable areas that we're not going to get into um, when they start sweating real bad, okay? Um, between games, I see this all the time at these facilities with these big fancy um, concession stands. These kids shouldn't be eating nachos and cheeseburgers and cheese fries between games. I can't be their parent and tell them what to eat and what not to eat, but, you know, think about it. You're going you're gonna to play a two-hour game. You're sweating. You're tired. You're dehydrated. Then you're going to go, yes, Ham, I see you, duels. <laughs> um, then you're going to go and have to play an hour later, and you're going to sit there and, and pile down nachos and, you know, the, the, the walking tacos and all that other stuff. It, it doesn't work out for you in the end, okay? I've seen a lot of kids break down stomach aches, headaches, stuff like that. Watch what you eat between games. Fruit's great, bananas, um, sandwich, just a regular sandwich, you know? But we're trying to stay away from fried food and stuff like that um, between games. It's very, very, very important. And again, like Danny Flynn here, one of our coaches is saying, please have drinks for your kids. It's really important. You, you take that for granted. Um, they don't have a bottle of water. They don't have a Gatorade. You know, you need to, you know, make sure they do because they're, they get dehydrated. Okay. And these kids drink a lot now. So um, try to have more than one. Okay. Uh, yes. Dan, Uncle Dan, uh, brother-in-law Dan, coaches, we can eat whatever we want, coaches. So. And we do, <laughs> but I'm talking about the kids, all right? So try to take all this into consideration. Chicken wings, Matty A, are not good for you in the middle of a game or between games. No, all that grease. All right, buddy, you should know that. <laughs> um, so try to take that into consideration. Like I said, when we first started, it's hydrating during the week and then, you know, watching what you eat even a couple days beforehand. Get your body ready for these weekends. Like I said, when these tournaments start back up this year, it's going to be crazy. They're going to be crammed in. A lot of teams like to, you know, not, not the full-blown tournament teams. A lot of teams like to do maybe one week, one a tournament one week, and then their league games and a tournament. You're going to have teams now doing multiple weekends in a row of, of tournaments. You know, and that's, if you think about it, over a weekend, you could play four games, four or five games. In three weeks, in 21 days, you're playing 12, 13, up to 15 games. That's a lot. I don't care how tough anybody acts or anything, that's a lot for 11, 12, even 13-year-olds to play, okay? So it's very important. People ask me about practices. Another great point by uh, Dan, when you get on these turf fields, the, the turf fields are always a lot hotter. That's another re reason when you're playing turf to bring changes of socks, okay? Your feet will sweat bad, so you got to, you know, know where you're playing on. Ask your coaches. Your coaches should know all this, you know, as far as if it's going to be turf. Is it all dirt? Is it all that stuff? So take all this stuff we're saying right now 
and use it. It will give you a competitive edge. Trust me when I tell you. Okay. Um, yes, Bill, Coach Bill Zeech. You definitely need a lot of pitching to, to, to roll in tournaments. And that was what I was getting to. My next point, when these tournaments start back up, it's going to be crazy. Okay. These tournaments do not want to cancel. They are postponing now, giving everybody vouchers. They want you to sign right back up when it's, when the season gets started. So like I said, you're looking at lots of tournaments um, to pick from, to play in. So it's important that you're ready to go, okay? And like I said, these kids need to know that. That's why we're doing a lot of these videos. Tonight's more talking, but we're trying to keep the kids in shape. We're trying to keep them mechanically sound. They're going to get a lot of innings quickly, okay? Like I said, if we don't start till June 1st, you know, you got about a month and a half of, of, of two months of tournaments before you get, get back in the fall ball. So think about that. It's a lot of games. My teams, some of my teams play up to 50 games a season. So now we're going to have to play over, instead of playing 50 games from April to August, we're playing 50 games from June to August. So you, you can see what's going to happen to some of these kids. Injuries are going to happen, so they have to stretch. Kids are going to have to stretch even more now. They should be stretching now, but I see too many kids not stretching. Get out there before a tournament game or any game and stretch. Run. Get your blood flowing. Get everything circulating, okay? Um, are there any other questions? See some people commenting, some people putting some good uh, advice out there for me. That's stuff that I might forget. Yeah. You definitely need lots of pitching. Bill Zeet said that, Jude. Say hi, Jude. He Pop your head in and say hi. Come in. Move in. There you are, dude. <laughs> There's our famous star, Jude. Okay? So, the cool the tournaments are super cool. I mean, you spend to spend a whole weekend with each other, and it's really cool if you win. I'm so lucky enough to have coached really good players and have had awesome, you know, assistant coaches where we won a lot of tournaments. Um, we didn't always win, um, but my teams have won a lot. You know, we're up over probably 20 tournament wins since I've been coaching between a few of my teams. Um, my, my oldest team now is getting ready for a very drooling, grueling uh, tournament schedule this summer in front of colleges. And that'll be a whole nother, that'll be a whole nother Facebook Live when you get into the showcases and stuff. Definitely. Denny Flynn said, great job today, Jude. <laughs> Again, thank you for everybody that chimed in on that uh, Fox News thing today. That was a total shocker for us to be, to be put on air. Um, thank you to... Jeffrey Kolakowski out there. He's been doing a lot of the behind the scenes work for me. His wife is actually the producer at Fox 29 and, and liked what we were doing. So, you know, was able to set that all up today. So that was pretty cool. Stressful, but cool. Um, so this whole thing's been really fun for us. Um, any other questions about tournaments? Steve, Steve McGarry has one. How many minutes do you get to, uh, but he didn't finish his sentence. Finish your sentence, Steve. Yes, Sam. I mean, Ham, I see you. We did get first. The Sats did get first. I have to mention that. My Mummers Club got yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Steve McGarry yeah. has a question. Our world-famous soccer coach from the girls' Holy Family team. How many minutes do you get to the field before a game? That's a good question, Steve. So if you're the first game of the tournament, obviously you can you know, show up an hour early, get yourself a nice full hour. A lot of times in these tournaments... When you're like, you know, as the day's going on, basically the umpires are just going out and changing. So you might only have 15 minutes. So you got to do stuff on this. This is a great question, Steve, by the way. You got to do stuff on the sidelines. You got to know the, what, what inning the other game's in. You have to know these things. Okay, they're in the sixth inning. My pitcher better start throwing. I've seen so many teams wait for the game to get over. They walk out, and then the pitcher don't even get warmed up, and he goes right out to the mound. Okay. I think one of our 11 U's have a question. What do you do when you're in a doubleheader? Same thing. I mean, you know, your coaches should line up your pitching when you're in just a normal doubleheader. You know, one of your league doubleheaders, line up your pitching and, you know, play each game to win. And, you know, same thing between games. Watch what you eat. You know, stretch out. This, a lot of times they think because they played one game, because they played one game, the second game they don't have to stretch. Well, you have to take them as two separate games. The second game you better stretch. Don't sit on the bench. I see a million kids just... And teams just sitting on the bench after the first game, bull crapping around. The one parent comes with the box of pretzels. You don't know what I'm talking about. And they, they clown around, and then they're not ready to play. Okay? Um, Coach Ryan from the 11 new team said, to answer the question, what do you do in a doubleheader? He says you win both. Coach Ryan Walter, he's my 11 new coach. I want to wish him a happy birthday today. 
Ryan is 52 years old, been doing baseball very long. He's very passionate. We're so happy to have him with the Royals this year with his first team. So happy 52nd to Coach Ryan out there. Jeff, Jeff K., our behind-the-scenes producer, trying to get kids playing time versus trying to win. Is there an age when it's understood best players on the field? Yeah. Another great question. I mean, look, the way I run my teams is we like to carry 12 guys at these younger ages. Um, I, I'm on the end of the fence where I like to play everybody. I don't even have I, – I can't remember when I did not start a kid except when the kids get older. Um, one season I made a big mistake on my oldest team that's already away from us. They're all playing in college. They guys, I ended up stockpiling a team one summer with like 15 kids. And, and you know, I, I some kids that were with me for a while kind of suffered with playing time because I kind of was still young in my coaching career and worried about winning. And we were winning already before I added these quote-unquote better players. But these better players didn't fit in with the guys I had from when they were 12 so that season turned into a disaster for me. Um, ironically enough, the next year, those kids went away. We went back to our old squad, and we started winning again. So, But to answer Jeff's question, it's a really good question. Um, I, I'm a firm believer at the younger ages in playing everybody and batting everybody. Some people will disagree with me. I know you're not really teaching kids stuff that at that age, but you are. You know, you know well, what are you teaching a kid by playing everybody? Well, what am I teaching a kid by sitting them on the bench and not getting the reps? That's my argument with people all the time. So other coaches like to bat nine, play nine, and have subs. And I understand that end of it too. As you get older, it, it all works itself out. The kids start to become pitcher only. So when you're carrying 13, you might have only you might have two guys that only pitch. So it's easier, okay, to manage your lineups that way. Uh, Steve McGarry, do you let your team listen to music on the bench? I have no problem with the kids listening to music if it's the right kind of music. I don't like all the I, – I don't mind rap music, but I'm not going to have cursing and all that stuff. They can put – if it's something that gets them psyched up, I tell them to put their headphones on, okay? Um, but I, I love music, so nothing better than having good music before the game, okay? Or at your practice, not during a game. No, we don't allow that during a game, okay? Uh, Brian Dorso. Tell kids how they should dress at a tryout. Kids came to his son's high school tryout with shorts on. Another great question. You go to a tryout, Jude. Come here. I'm gonna. Jude's got Jude right now. Has his baseball pants on, his hat and his jersey. Okay, that's how you should dress for a tryout. Okay, baseball pants, a hat. A the, the biggest thing I tell people is a jersey with your name on the back, so the coaches can see you with your name on the back and can kind of take notes on you. Not hey, who's that kid with the long hair? Or who's number 23, okay? This is a great question. So we'll have another one about tryouts down the line, maybe next year when tryouts get closer. But yes, please, baseball pants, hats, jersey, with your name on the back, is your proper attire for any tryout, okay? Uh, here we go. And then Danny, here's, here's another thing we'll touch on real quick. Den, Coach Danny. It is very important to have your kids pay attention on the bench. We talked about this during our hitting video. Pick up tendencies of the other team. Be those eyes for the coach. A lot of your coaching staffs might only have, you know, three coaches. That's six eyes. Maybe out of those six eyes, maybe only two of the eyes are, are experienced. So kids in the game can pick stuff up and let the coach know. Okay, so that's a great great point by Coach Denny. Uh, coach Mike Lebacki from Ben Salem. Avoid parent interference. Parents, stay away. Just stay away from your teams in a tournament. There's nothing more embarrassing than getting to an altercation with a parent. Unfortunately, I had that happen with me and a parent, a very level-headed parent. We both lost our cool in front of a bunch of kids, and uh, it, was kind of, it wasn't the greatest thing to see um, when it happened. And I, to this day, I feel bad about it. So, yeah, parents, stay away from the coaches. Coaches are just as intense as anybody. They want to win more than anybody. So you have to stay away and let them do their thing. Question them the next day. We're back at the hotel that night, okay? All right? Kathy Mizio. Is it bad to chew gum? No, chew gum. <laughs> I have, I've heard people say, well, they could choke or they're sliding. If kids want to chew gum, they want to chew gum. I can't, you know. I uh, Chew gum. Chew that big league chew. I think it makes guys look more like ball players. All right. Uh, what if an umpire makes bad calls and kids get mad? Well, that's going to happen every single game. Everybody knows I hate umpires. And I'm only kidding. I love all you umps. But... I have 
Yes, it happened with Jude Seven, you team. They're going to be umps that make big, big calls. You just have to learn to deal with it, especially in a tournament now. You get thrown out of a tournament game nine times out of ten. These rules are now you're suspended for the next tournament game. It happened to us up Penn State last year. One of my uh, one of my top guys, Colin Stockland, you know, emotional, said something to an ump. He didn't mean what he said. It wasn't that bad. But, you know, the umps go through these hot days too. They're in their gear. It's probably his third third game of the day. They're, you know, they get testy also. And the ump throw him out for no reason, in my opinion. We showed up the next day to play on Sunday, the first game, and Colin had to sit it. Okay, so imagine driving four hours to play baseball, and, you know, you're missing a whole game. Okay? All right. Any other questions before we start wrapping this up? This was a cool question and answer session tonight. It's a lot of good points made by some of my coaching buddies out there. Some of the kids ask questions. Um, again, we're going to keep doing this stuff. Uh, Tonight was more, like I said, like a round table almost with just me and Jude and all you guys. Um, I like to get, we've been messing around with that Zoom app a little bit, me and my other coaches. We're going to try to get a round table somehow with everybody and stuff like that going. So any other questions before we get off? I need a trivia question. Uh, hold on. Jude's going to talk to you for a second. Let me go get my trivia answer, okay? Jude, go out there. All right, Jude's going to mess around out there, and I'm going to go get our trivia question. So everybody get ready with their Google. This is for Phillies tickets. Tell all the players, get up and dance with Jude. All the players I want to see is getting up and dancing with Jude right now, or we're not answering a trivia question. All right? Parents, I want you to send videos to my phone of the kids dancing for the next minute while I go get our trivia question. Real quick, this is a good question, actually. Mike Cox, how do you handle parents that teach opposite of what you teach? Good question by Mike Cox. Parents that teach opposite of what we teach, I mean, there's nothing you can really do about it. It's up to the kid to realize, you know, who's right. You know, a lot of times the coaches are. So, you know, that's we'll get into that in another thing. Like, that's a great question, though. All right, I'm going to go back to Jude, and I'll be right back to get our trivia question. Sorry about that. We lost some people, but... All right, here's our trivia question for tonight. Since we're talking about tournaments, this is for two Phillies tickets. Yeah, we're just reading some. Okay. So, in two... Th All right, should I wait a minute? Uh, we, got, we got enough followers. All right, so here's our trivia question for tonight. Again, this is for two Phillies tickets. I really appreciate my buddy from the Phillies donating these tickets every time. He told me not to mention his name. So, um, 2009, the World Baseball Classic. Who was the winner in 2009 of the World Baseball Classic? That's our trivia question for tonight. Team USA. What? That was 2013. Oh, was it? What was 2009? Yeah, no, I answered it. What's his? Do at home? Yeah, I thought he's. Is it, what's the answer to the question? 
Keep talking, Jude. Pop your head in. Hello. All right, 2009 World Baseball Classic. It looks like we have our the first person in was Kat the Cassingers. Um, Nate, I see Liz. Liz is watching from our 11U team. The answer is Japan. So they were the first ones to answer correctly. Everybody got in on this one quick. So sorry for the uh, confusion. All right, so Cassingers, you won two Phillies tickets to an upcoming game whenever that's, whenever that's going to be. All right. So tonight was kind of boring. We just talked. I mean, I think we did a, threw a lot of good information out there um, about tournaments, and, and we had some cool questions asked. You know, it seems like everybody's wondering about the in interaction between parents and stuff like that. So we'll get into that on another one, okay? So keep an eye out for us. We're going to take a break from doing these for a couple days. Again, everybody who watched today on Fox 29 News, it was awesome. If not, go to my page. The link's up there. It was really cool. All right, everybody wants Jude to do his bat flip, so I'm going to let him do his bat flip before we go. All right, so here's Jude's bat flip. We'll see everybody on the next one. Hold on, Jude. All right, thanks again. Hold on. Hold on. Go ahead. Yes. All right, see you later.